come with me on a journey to a magical faraway kingdom of particle physics. I know it's it's like I couldn't I couldn't find a good way to start it. What I want to do is tell you about the world of subatomic physics, of how things work at the very smallest scales below the level of atoms, but use some metaphors to to get it across to so I'm not, not just I don't know, just tossing out jargon all over the place. And because they're, because trust me, when it comes to particle physics, it is a jargon minefield. And the, there's so much of it that it's hard to make heads and tails. But let's just instead tell the story. All right. Let's tell a story about a king and a queen. The king and the queen are known as they have names they're called the up quark and the down quark the, the quark is the family name and then they're up and down these two quarks rule their kingdom right they are the most stable they find themselves bound into a fortress and inside that fortress it's nearly impossible to get to them the walls are too high and the, and the bricks are too thick and it's too strong. No army can, can bust through that fortress. This fortress, when the up and down quarks, they don't rule as pairs, not necessarily as king or queen, but they rule as triplets. When two up quarks and a down quark get together, their fortress is called a proton. And when two, up, when two down quarks and an up quark get get together their fortress is called a neutron and it's almost impossible to break one of these apart but the strength of that fortress doesn't come from the quarks themselves they're actually pretty insignificant in the grand scheme of things just like the strength of a castle doesn't come from the mass or the size of the king or the knights themselves it comes from the walls, in the mortar, in the bricks, in everything that makes up the castle. And in this case, what makes up this subatomic medieval castle is the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force is by far, you might have guessed from the name, by far the strongest force in the universe. Over a hundred times stronger than any other force. This force is so strong that it glues together quarks, allowing them to become protons and neutrons. And then there's still strength left over for protons and neutrons to glue together to become atomic nuclei. Like if you chained a bunch of castles together and put a giant wall around them, that would be an atomic nucleus. But then once you break inside the nucleus, which might not be so difficult, we've been doing that for, I don't know, 60, 70 years. Inside that, are even stronger castles. They're smaller. Those are the protons and neutrons where the actual quarks reside. So these quarks, together with the power of the strong nuclear force, build these incredible, almost impregnable castles. Okay, who lives on the outside of a castle in the low village. It's the peasants. It's the people who are working the land or selling donkeys or um, whatever peasants do, they're, they're the ones doing it. The peasants in the subatomic medieval world that I'm creating a portrait of are the electrons. The electrons are the poor ones. They're way less massive than the quarks. And they're forced to live on the edges. They can't come in to the atomic nucleus. They have to live in shells around it. And they're the ones doing all the hard work of, you know, chemistry. If two nuclei want to get together, if two capsules want to come together and unite, who's going to be doing the uniting? It's the electrons. An atomic nucleus will take an accepted electron or donate it to someone else without even caring. Without even caring, won't even ask the electron what it wants. Just says, go, do it now. But to make that communication happen, the, the strong nuclear force isn't going to work because despite the strength of the strong nuclear force, it's very, very short range. So inside the castle, it's strong nuclear force and it's quarks all the way, all the time. But just outside the castle walls, the strong nuclear force doesn't have any influence. So for that, 
in order to communicate with its peasant subjects working the fields and the farms and the factories or whatever. The instead of the strong nuclear force, there's the electromagnetic force, which serves as like the royal court messengers. They they have one job and one job only, and that is to ferry the electromagnetic force from place to place. These photons, these carriers of the electromagnetic force, allow the atomic nuclei to communicate, the fortresses to communicate with their surroundings, the electrons that, that live in the villages surrounding the castle. And they allow it, the nucleus, the castle, the fortress, to communicate with other castles and other fortresses. These photons travel at the speed of light, are completely massless, do not tire, do not waver, they go in perfectly straight lines, and they are able to flood the entire universe. But, not everything listens to the royal messengers. Only things, only particles, creatures with electric charge will hear the message, will listen to the orders of a photon. So what else is there? What other force is there? Aha, uh -huh. there's a spy network. There's a spy network provided by gravity. There are agents all over the universe that are constantly listening for any sign of any mass or any energy, no matter if it's charged or uncharged or small or big, it doesn't matter. Gravity senses everything and is able to communicate that everywhere else in the universe. There is a star in another galaxy that is gravitationally influencing you right now. But the downside, because it's a spy network, the spies only speak in whispers. Gravity is by far the weakest force. It can't, it can say whatever is going on in the universe, but it can't say it. And so the quarks, the up and down quarks living in their castle keeps, they can technically feel what all the electrons around them in their villages and electrons far away, no matter the particle, no matter where it is, the quarks can feel it. They can sense it through gravity, just not very strongly. So the grip on the far countryside is relatively weak because the strong nuclear force won't extend past the castle walls. The electromagnetic force only cares, will only talk to other particles if, they're, if they carry electric charge. Otherwise, it's just gravity, and while there is an influence, it's not a very strong influence. There's more to the electrons, to the peasants, than just the electrons. Because the peasants are really made of a class of particles known as leptons. Leptons are a family of particles that include the electrons, but also include other particles like the muon and the tau particle. Now, the muon and the tau particle, they're like the peasants' electrons that you're familiar with. They're just as poor, they're just as downtrodden, but they're more massive. And in the rules of this subatomic world, the more massive you are, the more unstable you are. If you grow too fat, if you grow too rich, too wealthy, you will be cut down. You will be chopped up. You will not last long. And the muon and the tau, they, since they're so massive, they are unstable. It's like a peasant that gets too rich and all the other peasants are just going to chop him down or the king and queen are going to come and chop him down. I don't know why, what, how, who's doing the chopping or how or what or why, but it happens. The more massive you are, the more unstable you are. Electrons are the least massive members of the lepton family. And so they are the most stable. They are the ones that get to live. They are the ones that get to hang around. And that they're the ones that are left to, to do all the work. This hierarchy where there's three generations of, of the electron, the muon, and the tau also applies to the quarks. Remember that ruling couple, the up and down quark? Well, there's more quarks than that. There's six of them total. There's also top and bottom strange and charm. And again, 
The up and down quarks, the king and queen, they are the smallest ones. They are the lightest ones and they therefore they are the most stable ones. So it's the same rule across the universe. The lightest survive, the least massive survive are the most stable. And so an electron in the field gets to, it's popular, the field is populated by electrons and not muons and not taus because they're the least massive. The top, or sorry, the up and down quarks get to rule from their castle because they're the least massive of the quarks. That's just the rule of this subatomic medieval world. Thank you so much. I hope you appreciated this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. You can also go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to learn how you can keep all of my education and outreach initiatives going. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Go watch another video.